Massimo's a castriots Costa while the dogs and monkey pups Well, families drive Bailey's done Hello everyone, Hi. welcome to episode two of Bailston Life. I'm here talking to Margaret Quinn Simpson. She is someone who is known by everyone in Bailston and she is someone who knows mostly everyone in Bailston. And I was very interested to find out that she started uh, the OAP's lunch club um, in Bailston because it didn't have one. And she went about the whole thing, the whole process on her own volition figured out what to do, how to get the money, who to speak to, what to do next, until they ended up having a very successful, award-winning club that benefited the old age pensioners in Bailiston. Okay. Yes. Margaret. Yes. Okay, so, first of all, um, what made you think that Bailiston needed an OEP lunch club? Well, for a start, we've never been able to have a community hall Right. For anybody to meet up, people can be very lonely. Why not? Why? Why? Not? Because nobody has come up with any money, like government or the city's chambers. Or we were always on the outside. Right. Well, that's what I felt. So, see the community hall that's over there. Bailison's got a, a hall over in the church at the church hall. Yeah, but that belongs to the church. Right. Right. What I felt was people can be very lonely ah, at a certain age yeah. and if you can get a good tightener, a good dinner for a few, few pounds, a wee bit chat, yeah. a community, and build it up for the uh -huh. wee outings, theatres, blah, yeah. blah, right, okay. etc. And, but you, where did you see this going on? Where did I on? see, once I went, a few times I went down to Spring Boyg, which is much smaller than Bayliston, they've got their community hall, and you could go in every day for a meal. Right. Right. And I said, what's wrong with us? Easter House, it's well established now. I do agree at one time they did absolutely nothing for the people. So all these areas do have it. Yeah. Bayliston didn't. Okay. I always felt when we were, we were, although we paid for rates to Glasgow, we were never included. Right, okay. We were so, outsiders. Aha. Uh -huh. So, right, so you've now, you got one morning, you've got, you have Jim Jams on, you're having a cup of tea and you think to yourself, right, I'm going to start an OAP's lunch club in Bayliston. What, was the, what did you do first? First of all, what did I do? This is a difficult thing. What did I do? Well, I decided to get petitions up. Right. I went to the bookies. I went to the pub, the shops, the library, and the doctors who wouldn't participate. Oh, all right. Right? So I asked people to sign it. And through that, I had about 900 names to support it. Right. Not all pensioners, their families. Right. And okay. And what did you do with the petition? With that, I approached, am I allowed to say a political name? Well, I should think so. They're, they're, they're I they're, they're approached, well, the people in that, it was SMP and their um, local community, whatever, it sits in the city chamber, said he would take it up and he would get it attended to, which okay, never So happened. wait a minute, you've missed something out. So you've got the petition. What did you literally do with it? You went I to... I contacted the, the local person that would be representing us in the city chambers, which was SMP. Is that, is that an MP? No. In the city chambers, you've got somebody, if you've got a problem, you don't necessarily need to go to your MP. Right. You can go to the community, whatever it is. Which Liaison go. officer? Yeah, something like that. Right. So every area in Glasgow has got a person assigned within the council yes. who's a community liaison yes. officer. Did you know that? I did not know that. Okay, so you take your petition, you give it to this gentleman whose name was? I honestly cannot remember at that it, particular time. Matter. So if you does go back matter. 11 years, you'll be able to right. okay. find out. So he took your petition, he told you he was going to... To look into it and right. see about it. Of course, nothing happened. So for how long did nothing happen? <sighs> Probably about 10 months. And months. I wasn't satisfied. Okay, so what did you do next? Right, by this time, Margaret Kern had come into the area. Uh, tell me, who's Margaret Kern? Margaret Kern is our MSP right. for the Labour Party. For 
Bailiston, etc. Right. Personally, me, I'm not a member. I'm going to say it and keep it this in. I'm not a member of church, chapels, synagogues, or any political party. Okay. I've got a mind of my own. That's that. Good for you. So, Margaret Kern was <coughs> was using the little hall in St Andrew's Church for a, anyone to come with a problem. Okay, so which, had, which church is St Andrew's St Church? St Andrew's Church. Which is, where is That's that? the one that's just at the top of Muir Head, Muir Head, Muir Head Avenue in this street. So just uh, just across from the back yeah, of Morrison's? Across, yes, right. across to the swing park. Right, got you. So I says, well, that's the very woman I would like to speak to. I says, excuse me, hen, can I have a word with you? <laughs> right. Oh, I says, look, I says, nothing's happened about this and there's nothing in this area for seniors. Okay. And she said, look, I'll get you paper uh, from the city chambers with headings. Mm -hmm. So I had to start again, and I did it again. So you start again, you had to re-go re round yes. and get signatures from yes. all these people again, uh -huh. but now it's on city chambers headed Official note paper. paper. Right. So I did that, and from there, I could quite honestly go back 11 years, quite a lot to remember. I did go up, I remember going up to Easter House once, who have got all these things established, and it was Richard somebody, another. What was your reason for going there? Because they had already had it all established. So you were going up there to, to find out? Find out, blah, what blah. What did they do? Well, basically I just listened to different things, and you, it's basically legwork, nosiness and persistence, <laughs> right? Because I'm a novice yeah. compared to all these people. Yeah. So when I had to find a hall to start with. Okay, let, let's just, I'm going to just clarify a wee bit, okay? So 11 months have gone by, you've done your first petition, you, the, you've the chap in the city chambers who's responsible for your liaison officer, Bailiston. He took your uh, petition, but nothing happened. 11 months later, you now bump into uh, the MSP for Bailiston. She gives you headed note paper. You redo the petition. You then give that back to her, or do you go back into city chambers with it? I gave it to her. Okay, it's okay. Now, how long after you giving that to her are we now? Well, now we are in the stages of looking for a hall. Which is, are we still at the 11 month point or are we No, we've moved on. How much further? Not that, been? not that long. Okay. It's quite difficult to no, remember. No, of course, but listen, so this is just, oh, Margaret, just, just ballpark it. Just months. so that when people are listening, they've got an idea of right. timelines. A few months. Okay. And to find a hall, I'm repeating myself, Bale's not nowhere. Yeah. I went to the local St Andrew's Church, too expensive. £25 an hour and £5 half an hour for the use of the kitchen. For, for OAPs to have somewhere to go, a church. Right. So I was more than delighted when I approached St Bridget's and theirs was £25 for the, the, the few hours we would be there. Right. So people's right. got to be paid, they've yeah. got to heat the hall and you're using their various things. Yeah. All of a sudden we to find someone who would provide the meals and right. Mark Curran had said to me the school meals right. so we arranged it was um, the little school C Caledonia school the cooking was done there right. and they issued it to the local schools right. that that's how it was done huh so they centralized the cooking for all the schools in the one yes, school at one time I didn't know that either mm -hmm. huh one okay, so but she's but so no no I'm sorry Margaret but what I was interested in there is the fact that so she's getting you to organise things but does that not mean now the funding's in place? No, you don't get any funding, darling. But to provide it for ourselves, got off the ground. Okay, so why do you need the council at all then? The well, if you just set it up yourself. But. I found out you could go to Glasgow Old People's Welfare, which is now called Glasgow uh, Golden Generation. Right. And they are based down now at Dilmarnock. At that time, it was away past Charn Cross. Right. Right. And they said they would give us £100, but if I wanted to turn it into 
tools, for instance, yeah. dishes and with nothing, yeah. absolutely not a penny. Right. So I just said yes, that I, I said yes, we'll do that. I'll turn it into the dishes, etc. Because the very first meals we get sent up, 72 people turned up. We never even had a teaspoon. <laughs> so Caledonia School loaned us, loaned us all the dishes. Tell me it was hot dogs you'd ordered for lunch. No, <laughs> a three course dinner and it was £2.50. £2.50, no cutlery? Nothing. No Not plates? Nothing. Not a teaspoon. So just by speaking to people, like Mary says... No, but that day, what did you do that day in that moment? We phoned the Caledonia, brought all the dishes. Oh. Right. A lot of stress. Yeah. Stressful. Yeah. And even Mary still worked in the chemist and she said she would come in a Friday. Have you just introduced someone? Yes. Who's Mary? Mary Deacon, who work, was still working and part-time and she said she would come in a Friday. Right. And that's, I said, right, a Friday's a good day for people, you know, that was it. So that's how it really started. Margaret was £75 in debt. And we ended up with a bank book of £5,000. Okay, so tell me, what's the journey from £75 in debt yes. to £5,000 in the green? It's how you hold the money and how you... It's just like a woman keeping the purse in the house and running the house. Right. It backs it. Good household careful, budget. Careful, careful. Yeah. Uh, finding a way out, how to do things, uh -huh. how uh -huh. to get things cheaper, etc. Right. So, and how to approach people. I mean, I approached one of the hotels up at um, Renfrew Street, that's right, I forgot the name, I used to work up there as well, and we couldn't get a, a, a ladle long enough to lift the soup. So I went <laughs> to the hotel, I said, I don't want in for nothing, but can you tell me where I could get a ladle uh -huh. for the, oh, and they gave me one. People oh, are yeah. very, very generous. Yeah. So, when you, if somebody from another community was thinking about starting a lunch club, then what we've identified so far is one, you need to have the support of the community and local businesses, get headed notepaper from the city chambers, and you can get that by approaching your MSP or a councillor, or maybe even approaching them directly, explaining yes. what you're doing and asking for it. Uh, but there isn't any help, there's no fund available t for you to go and have the money to pay your first deposit for your, t for your community hall or wherever you're going to do it. None of that exists, so you really have to have this set up like a business and hit the ground running. So how did you advertise to get people to come along and use the service? We did it by word of mouth and then we notices in the shops. Right. So word of mouth, just by everybody talking to everyone else. Yes. And did we have as much social media back then? No. 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 So it should be a lot easier to communicate to your community um, that you're going to be opening this up, uh, what your menus are and what the prices are going to be. And what were the other... Now, you, you mentioned earlier that you won awards. Yes. Is that in here? Uh-huh. Right. After a number of years, um, we were put forward for, excuse me a minute, I've forgotten all the names of them. The champions are honoured at the grand final in the city chambers. Right. And I wasn't that, even I going, that. and that's me, and we won it. And they won it. But Bailey's <laughs> But wonderful people, absolutely wonderful people. It's the things that these people have done for their community right. is unbelievable. So this is a community award. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's lovely. So you received a community award for the work that you'd done. And we actually got two awards, but I can't even remember. It's two pieces of glass with the, the names that are on it. Right. Right, but that is actually, it depends on the people trust You've got to trust me and I have to trust you. Yeah. And it's just the roping people in. Yeah. Sit down here, you take the money and she'll check it. Yeah. 